Continuous positive airway pressure is a treatment option for sleep apnea. As you sleep, CPAP provides air at a pressure just high enough to prevent the collapse of your airway. The pressurized air is provided through a mask that seals with your mouth or nose. This allows you to breathe without much effort and to sleep without waking up. The CPAP machine doesn't breathe for you. You can breathe in and out normally on your own. Some people require different pressures during the inhale and exhale cycle to help them breathe more normally or comfortably. In 2016, Randy Boyd was prescribed a Philips Respironics RimStar CPAP sleep apnea device. He initially really thought the machine was making a difference in his health and sleep. But then in June of 2021, Randy and many others began learning that more than a dozen Philips Respironics machines that deliver pressurized air through a mass were recalled because of potential health risks from faulty components. And that specifically included Philips CPAP's cancer risks, which come from the chemicals in the foam, including isocyanates. Isocyanates are potential human carcinogens that are known to cause cancer in animals, according to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Phillips was put on notice as early as 2014 that there were serious issues with the foam they chose to use in the devices. Phillips was aware of safer alternatives and at one point had the choice to switch to them. At least seven years passed after Phillips first became aware of the problem that they decided to take corrective actions. In fact, in June 2022, unsealed court documents revealed that Phillips knew about the problem for at least three years before the recall. An engineer said he received complaints about disintegrating polyurethane that made its way into the machine's airways. Bloomberg reported this. Since then, millions of people in the United States and their doctors have been scrambling to find alternatives for those with common sleep disorders, breathing problems, and respiratory emergencies. The Philips recall involves certain BiPAP and CPAP and ventilator machines. In fact, Philips had to submit a repair and replacement program for the flawed components to the FDA, which resulted in backlogged orders. Because of the backlog to replace his current device, Randy had no other choice but to continue using the device until January of 2022, when he obtained a replacement unit. In July of 2020, at the age of 58, Randy Boyd was diagnosed with throat cancer on his left side. He was shocked. Randy has undergone extensive radiation and chemotherapy. Unfortunately, his cancer has metastasized from his left side to his right side. In this Insider Exclusive Network TV special, Justice in America, life-threatening Philips Respironics medical devices, what you need to know, Randy Boyd's story. Our news team is on location in Pensacola, Florida to meet with Troy Bout, a trial attorney at Levin Papantonio Rafferty and his client Randy Boyd in pursuit of justice on his behalf and others. Here's Randy to describe his nightmare experience with the Philips Remstar CPAP device. My name is Randy Boyd. I was uh, diagnosed with sleep apnea. So I was given a Philips CPAP machine to help me with my sleeping. And uh, I had the machine for six and a half years. When I got the machine, I thought this is the greatest thing on earth because now I'm, I'm starting to dream again. I'm sleeping well. I, I wake up, I feel refreshed. I'm, I'm just thinking, man, this is great, you know, because I'm, I'm, I don't feel sleepy the next day. I don't feel sluggish. So six and a half years later, they're telling me that, you know, I've been going to the doctor four or five times because I, they're telling me I got laryngitis. My throat was like swollen. I couldn't speak for like a week at a time. This is like four times over the years it's happened and nobody can tell me what's wrong. And then all of a sudden one day I end up with a bruise on the left side of my neck. And when I touched it, it was real sensitive. So I went to my primary doctor she felt my neck and says, you need to have a sonogram. 
So the sonogram led to a biopsy. Then they're telling me I have throat cancer. And I'm just, uh, I couldn't believe it. So next thing I know, I'm having surgeries. I'm having radiation on my left side of my neck. And then I waited another three months after the radiation and chemo and did another PET scan. And then they tell me I have cancer on the right side of my neck and I had to do another 30 treatments of radiation. And they telling me that it got into my bloodstream and traveled to my liver. And my last surgery that I had was in May of 2022, and they had to cut out a piece of my liver. Three months later, I was given a clean PET scan, but I just couldn't believe that uh, I was having cancer. And then a friend of mine sends me a link one day and said there's a recall on Philips CPAP machines. And I couldn't believe what I was hearing because here I am for two years, I've been fighting cancer and this machine is, you know, it's gonna be the culprit of this cancer that I've been dealing with. I mean, it's horrible. And I can't, then I find out in 2015, they knew that the, the machine caused a risk of cancer and didn't do anything about it. And in 16, I got my machine and I'm breathing through this thing for six and a half years. And I just couldn't believe that they didn't do anything about it. And uh, I finally got a clean PET scan, but I've, I've been through some bad things because of this company. And I'm doing this right here because I don't want anybody to ever have to go through the things I've been through because of the Philips CPAP machine. Mine was a sore uh, system one machine and it is on the recall list and it's defective and i i just pray to god that it helps somebody to realize they don't need to be using these machines because they're defective what i found out the Philips cpap machine is what caused the cancer all the particles and the things and the toxins and the foam that's in that machine i was breathing it in my lungs it was going in my throat for six and a half years. And all the times I was getting hoarse, I had no idea. What I'm most angry about is Philips CPAP machines. They knew that there was something wrong with these machines and they disregarded about doing anything about it. They had no concern for human life. If people are getting sick and uh, it causes cancer, I can't believe that they didn't do anything about it. In this network TV special, Troy will explain the FDA's class one recall of Philips CPAP machines. Who is affected by Philips CPAP recall? The possible serious health risks linked to this foam exposure. Scientific studies regarding Philips CPAP and BiPAP devices. Which Philips sleep machines and ventilators were recalled? How Levin Papantonio Rafferty can help all those affected by defective Philips CPAP, BiPAP, or ventilator devices? Why you should choose their law firm to represent you? Troy has earned a reputation as an unyielding trial lawyer who repeatedly represents individuals and families against big companies in the Goliaths of the world and repeatedly wins. He has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in Pensacola and across the nation. He has seen many innocent and hardworking people injured and killed by negligent corporations. His passion is problem solving. He approaches each legal case as a scientist trying to solve a puzzle. He has seen many clients suffer preventable injuries and deaths. And because of that, he is driven to help people who have been harmed by the corporate Goliaths of the world. His goal? To make them accountable, more responsible, and of course, to get justice for his clients. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from Pensacola, Florida. It is my great pleasure to introduce Troy Bauk to the show. Welcome to the show, Troy. Oh, thank you. It's good to be here. Tell Ronnie a little bit about your law firm and what your law firm specializes in. 
Sure. So Love and Papantonio Rafferty opened its doors in 1955, and we've been helping people ever since. Um, for the last 30 or 40 years, our firm is really focused on mass torts, and we're sort of considered one of the preeminent law firms in the country for mass torts. Um, one of the things our firm is, is sort of famous for is that we hold the convention twice a year, Mass Torts Made Perfect, where basically the entire Mass Tort plaintiff bar uh, goes to Las Vegas and, uh, and we basically go through the different science, et cetera, of all the different Mass Tort projects. And we, we basically work together on, on fighting these big corporations. And for our audience, um mass torts actually refers to a lot of people you represent in like one lawsuit and torts injuries suffered. Yeah. And you have been involved with other cases like that, like the earplugs that the Army had in various other cases, correct? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the 3M combat arms earplug litigation um, is still ongoing. It's a huge litigation involving over a couple hundred thousand plaintiffs. And I, and I think, you know, for the Phillips litigation, CPAP litigation, I think that's going to end up in a similar position because there's so many people affected by this. There's millions, aren't there? Yeah, there was over 5 million units uh, or devices recalled, but there's actually about 15 million defective units out there. A lot of them at this point, because they're older, may have been already thrown away um, because the, the motors in them start to go after a while and they get replaced. A lot of insurance companies have a policy of replacing them after five years. So they'll, they'll issue a user a new one. So talk to us a little bit about um, the Philips manufacturer, right? Philips uh, respiratory medical devices, including CPAPs and BiPAPs, right? Sure. Yeah. And, and ventilator units. And so in terms of, to begin with, Philips Respironics, um, this is one of the most egregious cases of corporate conduct we've seen in a while, just simply uh, based on the information that we've already received, uh, even in, that was documented in the FDA 483 report. Um, it indicated that they've known about the problem for a long time. They know it, or they knew that it would have harmful uh, effects on people's health, and it could potentially even um, kill people. And, and yet they did nothing um, year after year after year. And that's what's so frustrating about these kind of cases. Um, and the devices themselves, um, they're basically, if you can put them into three groups, the, the ventilator uh, devices are meant for home care or, or perhaps, you know, residential care of, you know, elderly, et cetera. Like you saw recently in the COVID cases where people were on ventilators. Ventilators are something that you would use almost 24 hours a day, and you can actually dial in the number of breaths a person takes in, in an hour or a minute. Helps you breathe. It helps you breathe. Similarly, the, the CPAP devices and the BiPAP devices also help you breathe, and they're meant to basically counteract sleep apnea, which is a medical condition where your throat will basically, when you're sleeping, close, and it'll cause people to wake up over and over, sort of gasping for air. By having that continuous pressure of air pumped into your mouth and down your throat, it keeps that passageway open, so you don't wake up in the middle of the night, and so you have a much better sleep. And that's, that's what they're intended to do. Right, and we're gonna bring on your client um, later on uh, to talk a little bit about you know his particular situation, Randy Boyd. But tell our audience a little bit about where you are in the lawsuit, in the mass tort. You know, what are the legal strategies you're pursuing, the experts you rely on, et cetera? It, well, to begin with, this case, like most mass tort cases, gets consolidated. So it goes in front of a single judge, and it's Judge Conti in this case, and it's uh, the litigation is centralized up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is very close to Philips Respironics manufacturing plant for these devices. Um, in, in terms of where the litigation is, since it's being consolidated last fall, you know, there's been a leadership group selected and I'm on the plaintiff's uh, science and expert committee and I work with some other committee members on retaining the types of experts you're talking about. Because there's such a wide range of injuries, we have to get many different types of experts. We have to get, like in Randy's case there, it would be an ENT oncologist, or we call them otolaryngologists, et cetera. And, and, we, and with them, we'll go through the possibilities of what chemicals affected 
you know, or cause, I guess, cancer. And, and what we've learned basically along the way are the chemicals that were involved in the manufacture of foam are both cytotoxic and genotoxic. And, and cytotoxic basically means that chemical or compound will actually kill cells. And genotoxic means it basically corrupts the DNA. So it breaks apart the DNA. And whenever you have that breaking apart of the DNA, that's where you have the greater potential of cancer forming. And so, but like Randy is, is uh, a person who had that, th has throat cancer or had throat cancer. He's successfully battling it so far. But there's many other types of injuries too. You can have lung cancer, you can have even worsening asthma, worsening COPD. There's, and, and so it's just, it's a large litigation. We're still going through discovery and we're still working up our experts in the case. Now, in any of these kind of cases, when we talk about science, you sit on the science committee, right? Science, scientific facts. They're gonna have their experts. You're gonna have your experts. And from my understanding, isn't Philip saying it's not our fault, it's the foam manufacturer's fault? Yeah, I, I think that they want to believe that or they want other people to actually believe that. But, you know, truth be told is that they knew that so clean and other systems that use oxidation, right, as a, a cleaning process or ozone as a cleaning process, they've, they were fully aware of it. And in fact, I think they've even encouraged the use of the so clean because if you think about it, people were always concerned that their devices weren't clean enough, and maybe that would be a reason that they wouldn't want to use a CPAP machine altogether. But so clean, and other manufacturers like so clean, basically were able to reassure clients that their devices are clean. And so, and we now know through those FDA reports that Philips was well aware of how the foam breaks down and through a process called hydrolysis, and, and was well aware of, of so clean and them using oxidation. For them to come now after the fact and claim, well, it's really because people were using quote unquote unauthorized cleaning devices, it is just, it, it's hilarious in a sense. It, it's just, it's, it's repugnant at the same time. And, and I think the more you have a device manufacturer like that trying to, to get away with something like that early in the litigation when they know we're gonna go and test these products, right? We're gonna look at the foam. And what we found out was the type of foam that's used in the machine is called this polyester polyurethane foam. And that's, and it breaks down through a process called hydrolysis, like I was saying, through high heat, high humidity. Other types of foam, polyether foam, is the type of foam that would be affected by oxidation, which the SoClean machine does. Polyether foam isn't involved in our case. It, they use polyester foam. They're just trying to confuse the facts. So is there a court date that's coming up? Has something been set? Where are you? So there's going to be multiple court dates before we finally get to a, a trial. Because what you do is you select a couple of good cases to go to trial first, correct? These are your like trial balloons, right? The best cases? Um, they're not even our best cases because really what it is is, and it depends on how the bellwether selection uh, works, but sometimes the judge will allow us to select four cases. They'll allow the defense to select four cases. The judge may then pick two cases and you try those cases. So you see your best cases, your worst cases get tried. Other times they just take representative samples of the cases and we'll work those up for trial. But basically it's to help the courts um, make them more efficient you know, by doing this bellwether section. Instead of trying 200,000 cases, we try to get an idea of what the damages are and what juries believe the damages are for a representative. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons we're here today is because Levin, Pep, Antonio, Rafferty has been involved with these cases for 60 years. Types of cases like this, mass injuries, right? Mass torts. Um, one of the things, if I was in a situation where I might be affected by this, that I look at with your law firm is you have the deep pockets, if you will, um, to be able to spend the money to get the kind of research and scientific evidence that you need to successfully prosecute a case like this, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And even the judges, when they go to appoint uh, firms and attorneys from these firms, 
onto the MDL, they always want you know us involved and, and other large firms where they know if the litigation costs over a period of time, it's not uncommon to cost 20, 30, 40 million dollars. And every trial that you do costs at least a, a million dollars just for the trial itself. So it, it takes a lot of resources to fight the large corporations. And so you essentially have to prove what thing? What exactly? Well, it, it will have to prove the general liability case to begin with. And basically that Phillips did all these things. It, it was a design defect. You know, they should have designed, uh, in this case, the foam so it lasted at least as long as the device, because by law, they're required to do that. When you're making a, a medical device, all the component parts are supposed to last as least as long as the device. In this case, they, they, there was no expiration on the device, but they knew that most people use these devices five, six, even up to 10 years, right? And yet the foam, they also knew, started breaking down sometimes in less than one year. But once it's past a year, it's going to be breaking down. So there is, there is no reason for a foam like polyester, polyurethane to ever be installed in that medical device. Okay. Um, fortunately, we have your client with us right now, Randy Boyd. So let's bring him on right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Randy Boyd to the show. Welcome to the show, Randy. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here, by the way. You're very welcome. Um, I really, when I was reading your case and I was looking at all this information that was available, you know, it should have been available to users of CPAC machines, I thought, wow, you know, they just don't give a damn about people's lives, do they? No, sir. Because look at you. How many chemotherapy and radiation treatments have you had? And you've had three surgeries, right? I've had three cancer surgeries. Uh, I had six and a half weeks of chemo the first time, yeah. 33 treatments of radiation. Mm -hmm. Then when I had my second surgery, I did a, uh, they found more cancer and I ended up doing another uh, 30 treatments of radiation after that. So let me ask you this question. Um, you mentioned numbers, 33 treatments, right? What does it feel like after you go through chemotherapy or radiation? How does that affect your life? Afterwards, I would be so weak uh, when I get in my pickup truck after leaving there. And you drove? I drove and I worked every day and it took everything that I had, every ounce of energy I had. There'd be days I'd just sit in the truck afterwards and just trying to get my strength to just drive home. Could you eat at all or what? Everything tasted terrible but you were able to get food down. I ate a lot of uh, uh, soups, stuff that I didn't have to chew, yeah. and uh, I couldn't eat like meats because my mouth was so dry from all the radiation and them just cooking me. And how, how, how would they space these radiation treatments? How many days? The first time I did 33 treatments, and I did them five days a week until the 33 treatments were done. Yeah. And the second time, the same thing, five days a week, until all 30 were done. Yeah. Do you know, did the doctors say, okay, now that you've done these treatments, I think we got it? Did they ever say that? After, the, after my third uh, surgery, uh, three months later, I had a PET scan and they said, so far I'm clean, but I, I have to keep going back every three months. How is your sense of taste now? It still hasn't come back. And my mouth is always dry. I'm always having to keep water around uh, to keep it from being so dry. And, even foods today, they don't taste normal like they should. Troy, am I correct in saying that this might have all been prevented had the Phillips uh, made consumers aware that there could be this possible danger of getting cancer? Yeah, you're exactly right on that because there's evidence from, and the FDA put it in their report, that there was 222,000 complaints for this very same thing about these small flakes of foam or something black specks they said in the tubing. And they never did anything with it. They never did anything with it. And that was all the way back to 2008. You know, they never did anything with it. And even when they were studying the problem in 2015, you know, they could have come forward. It, it's, it's all documented in their filing cabinets. A couple of questions. What do you think 
of the job that Levin Papantonio Rafferty is doing for you, and particularly Troy. I'm very thankful to have them on my side. And uh, I just pray to God nobody ever has to go through what I've been through with this machine. It has caused me so much uh, anguish, uh, pain, misery. Uh, and then I'm looking at my grandkids and my family, and I want to I want to live. I don't want to die from some machine that somebody had. Uh, they were so worried about making a mighty dollar than not saving a human life. What are you using now to help you sleep? I'm using a resume CPAP machine, and uh, I have no risk with that machine because it... And that helps you now? Yes, yes. And one last thing. I want you to give this message directly to Phillips Management. What do you have to say to them? Should they be held personally responsible? Shame on them. How dare you treat people like this like they're not even human? You knew this machine was defective, but you kept sending them out and not worrying about what it's doing to people's families or, you know, and that's just horrible. That's, that's just un-American. I can't believe that they have the audacity to do this to people. And they ought to be brought up and uh, they ought to have to pay some kind of way, whether it's financial or physically, some kind of way they need to pay for what they've done wrong. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show and thank you both for taking your time to send this message out to folks out there who need your kind of assistance and your kind of witness testimony. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at insiderexclusive.com.